Hey everyone, in this video we are going to talk about flow of a program and more specifically about algorithms, flowcharts and pseudocode. This is the second video of the series Introduction to Programming that covers topics from programming fundamentals to data structures and algorithms. In the last video we talked about types of languages and memory management. So without any further ado, let's get started. So first of all, let's talk about algorithms. What is an algorithm? An algorithm is a finite sequence of well-defined instructions used to solve a specific problem or perform a computation. Next, what are the characteristics of an algorithm? An algorithm must be clear and unambiguous. That means each of its steps should be clear in all aspects and must lead to only one meaning. Well-defined input. If an algorithm says to take inputs, should be well-defined inputs, well-defined output. The algorithm must clearly define what output will be yielded and it should be well-defined as well. Finiteness. The algorithm must be finite, that, that is, it should not end up in infinite loops or the like. Feasible. The algorithm must be simple, generic and practical such that it can be executed using the available resources. And finally, and most importantly, it should be language independent, that is, it must be plain instructions that can be implemented in any language and yet the output will be same as expected. Now, we have understood the characteristics, let's move on to talk about how we design a, an algorithm. In order to write an algorithm, the following things are the prerequisites. The problem that is to be solved by the algorithm, the constraints of the problem that must be considered, the input to be taken to solve the problem, the output to be expected when the problem is solved, the solution to the problem according to the given constraints. So with this, let's look at an example. Let's look at an algorithm to add two numbers. So first we start, we declare two integer variables num1 and num2. So we are taking two numbers as input from the user and we are storing those values in num1 and num2 respectively. Declare an integer variable sum to store the resultant sum of the two numbers. So and then we are adding these two numbers and storing the result in the variable sum. And finally, print sum. And that will be the end of this algorithm. So with this, let's move on to the next one, which is an algorithm to find largest among three numbers. So first we start, declare three integer variables num1, num2 and num3. So we take three numbers as input from the user in this case and we will store them in num1, num2 and num3 respectively. And then we will move on to checking the conditions. So first, if num1 is greater than num2, if this condition is true, we will check if num1 is greater than num3 also. So if that is also true, we will print num1, otherwise print num3. Suppose if num1 is greater than num2, if that condition is false, then we will check if num2 is greater than num3. If that is true, we will print num2, otherwise we will print num3. And that will be the end of this algorithm. So now let's look at this example 2 with an explanation. Here in this case we have three numbers as input from the user. They are 12, 1 and 33. So first we will start and we are declaring three variables num1, num2 and num3. And then we are taking three numbers as input from the user which is 12, 1 and 33 and we are storing these values in num1, num2 and num3 respectively. And then we are checking if num1 is greater than num2, that is if 12 is greater than 1, which is true. And then we are checking if num1 is greater than num3, that is if 12 is greater than 33, which is false. Hence we are printing 33, which is the largest among these three numbers. And that will be the end of this algorithm. So now that we have talked about algorithms, let's talk about flowcharts next. So what is a flowchart? A flowchart is a graphical representation of an algorithm. It uses various symbols to show the operations and decisions to be followed in a program. The common symbols that are used in building a flowchart are as shown below. So we have start or stop, input, output, processing, condition, and the corresponding symbols are shown on the right side. So let's look at an example of a flowchart in which the aim is to add two numbers. So first we will start we will declare three variables, num1, num2 and sum. 
and then we will read two numbers as input from the user and store them in num1 and num2 and then we will add these two values and the, and then store the sum in the sum variable and then finally we will display the sum and that will be the end of this flowchart now as an example 2 let's consider finding the largest among three numbers so first we will start we will declare variables num1 num2 and num3 we will read three numbers as input from the users and store them in num1 num2 and num3 and then first we will check if num1 is greater than num2 if this condition is true we will check another condition num1 is greater than num3 if this is also true we will print num1 otherwise we will print num3 so if the condition num1 greater than num2 is false then we will check another condition which is num2 is greater than num3 so if this becomes true we will print num2 otherwise we will print num3 and that will be the end of this flowchart so now that we have talked about flowcharts and algorithms now let's talk about pseudocode so what is a pseudocode it is used to represent the implementation of an algorithm and also it can be interpreted irrespective of the programming background it has no syntax like any of the programming language and thus can't be compiled or interpreted by the computer as an example let's take sum of two numbers so the pseudocode would look something like this so first we will start input num1 comma num2 sum equals num1 plus num2 and finally printing the sum and that will be the end of this code as a second example we have finding the largest among three numbers so we will start input num1 num2 num3 and we will start checking the conditions if num1 is greater than num2 if num1 is greater than num3 then print num1 otherwise print num3 if num1 is greater than num2 if that condition is false then we will move on to the else part and check another condition which is if num2 is greater than num3 then we will print num2 otherwise we will print num3 so this will be the end of this pseudocode now that we have understood the flow of a program we will deep dive into other core concepts in the upcoming videos so with this Let's wrap up today's session. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please like and share and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. With that being said, I will see you in the next one.